Angela from Damn the Diets. Today I wanted to address a topic that I hear a lot about. What is binging? Why am I binging? Why am I having this compulsive hunger? What's going on? What's wrong with me? Can you help? So let's understand what's going on. Where is the binging coming from? And um, are you binging? So people often in, are in this fight that they think that they need to control, that they think they need to fight their cravings and their hunger and the body's wishes to get to where they want to be with their body. But really, it's possible to do it without restricting or dieting of any kind and to be able to eat the foods that you love. Um, in my journey, my story over almost a decade of you know, being in the restrict binge over exercise purge cycle, I struggled with my body and food and I tried to fight it for so long. Typically it was either to maintain or lose my weight or my body leanness or body fat percentage or muscle gain. And I would have that feeling that I could stay on track, but then I would fall off the bandwagon. And so I remember wondering what was wrong with me? Why couldn't I maintain my willpower anymore? Um, it was getting harder and harder as I continued. And I thought that there was something wrong with me. I thought I was weak. I thought I was a glutton and that I didn't have any correlation between my, restrictin, my restrictive and compulsive behaviors. And I had this unhealthy relationship with food and my body that was actually creating the whole dysfunctional mess. And I remember seeing people around me and it seemed like they could just do it easily. And I remember thinking like, why can they do it and I can't? What's going on here? I was seeing so many people eating my favorite foods, but let me preface and say that this easy balanced picture that is painted or portrayed on social media is not always the case and what's going on behind the scenes. But there were those people who did have it together and they didn't have to put on, put too much thought or control or effort into it. They always preached balance and I could never fathom this concept because I thought that balance and moderation was just a cop out and it was a justification for their unhealthy and lazy habits. So remember this concept, humans are not what they do today but they are what they have been doing the day before and the day before that and the day before that and the day before that um, consistently. So we can wire ourselves to binge or feel out of control with food or we could wire ourselves to be balanced and in it for the long-term sustainability without food controlling our lives. Are you one? Thinking about food a lot, I mean like 50 to 100% of the time, and it's not just even the act of eating, but it's also the obsessive mindset about what you can do to control the situation and how upset you are about how you can't control yourself around food or thinking how food is the enemy and or how you need to restrict and how you need to stop the binge eating. So a good amount of your time is what consumes your thoughts. So there's this consuming element that dominates your relationship with food right? So another sign is that you can eat and eat without feeling full. So when your body is in the starvation mode, often the satiety hormone goes down. So you're able to eat and eat and eat without ever feeling full. And this is your body's way of being able to get in as much as it, energy as it needs um, without you feeling full. And this is how you're able to do this and how you find when you heal, you're able to feel your satiety again more so over time because your body starts to raise the leptin um, the more that it comes out of starvation mode and the more it doesn't need that much food anymore any day because it doesn't feel like it's being starved anymore because you're consistently feeding it. Another thing is a feeling that you're almost on autopilot when you eat. So when you go to eat, it's almost as if something takes over you that's not you as you're eating. So another sign is the planning, the plotting, the going back and forth between, should I do this? Should I not do that? Should I do this? So one side of you has all of these goals and aspirations and cares for your family and friends. And the other side has this compulsion and hyper focus um, desire to just eat. So if you're experiencing any of these, then it means that you probably have been wiring yourself unknowingly on accident 
perhaps to binge, to think about food obsessively, to eat on autopilot because of the restrictions and the diets as an act to gain control or to lose the weight or to maintain the weight. But you can reprogram your brain for freedom. And this is through healing your relationship towards food, um, that it's not the enemy, that your body and your hunger um, doesn't have to be controlled or suppressed, that you aren't addicted or you have a problem. It's just the result of restricting yourself in some way in any shape or form. I personally at one point thought I was just addicted to food. That was my ras rationalization for my actions and my compulsion to eat and my thoughts around food. Unfortunately, Overeaters Anonymous preaches that if you have this compulsion around food, that you have to practice abstinence. So by cutting sugar, cutting flour, cutting bread, cutting gluten, and I just don't believe that. I, I don't believe that you have to be in this pattern and self-sabotage with food for the rest of your life. And then you're labeled with this disorder that you have forever and that you have to try to control because it's never going away. No, I wasn't a food addict. You're not a food addict. Nobody's a food addict. You may have a sweet tooth and like sugar more than someone else, but that doesn't mean you're addicted to sugar. People have different preferences and desires. When someone has sugar and they feel like they can't stop, it's not because they're addicted to sugar. It's typically because you're so, so, so restricted that when you finally get it, you're hit with dopamine, which programs you to want to eat more in an attempt to replenish the deprivation. So this means that you don't have to cut it out because you're not an addict. Abstinence is not the answer. You can't abstain from food. So we have to come up with a solution that's balanced for us. That means including your favorite foods, nothing's off limits, and you can get to a point where you can have some of what you want and not have to eat the entire box. Um, you just eat to satisfy your craving and then you can move on with your day in your life. And even if this seems impossible, it is possible. I've been there and I thought that it was never going to be possible for me because I was in it for almost a decade feeling this compulsion and that food controlled my life. But lo and behold, once I let go and developed a healthy relationship with eating and my body, um, it all started to balance out on its own. This has to come before the weight can gradually come off. So the part of your brain and the back part of your brain, your survival area of the brain, is very irrational, very automatic. It doesn't care about your family and friends. It only cares about survival. So it becomes hyper-focused on food when it's restricted. There's no reasoning with it. You can't reason with this brain not to eat, when for that matter, eventually it will take over and it will win and it will eat and it will continue to fight until it's fed to satisfaction. The reason, the plotting, the planning, the rules, the journaling, the calling a friend, the going on a walk, um, that stuff doesn't work because you're not speaking to this primal, primal portion of your brain and it's driving you to just eat the food. So there's another part of your brain in the forefront where your goals and your dreams, it's you, it's your personality, it's your self-control center. Um, this part gets suppressed while you're in starvation mode, while the primal part of your brain actually gets any fuel that does come in. So this happens from restricting yourself in any way, shape, or form. Just eating enough is not enough. If you're mentally judging criticizing, shaming yourself and saying you're going to start back over, that you can't have it later, whatever. So mental, physical, emotional restriction, it all comes into play. It all can trigger your brain into starvation mode and um, survival mode. Realize that you're not broken, no matter how compulsive or crazy that you feel around food, um, and you're not going to be stuck with some disorder forever that you have no control over. You just have to deal with getting your brain out of this starvation survival mode. So don't feel bad for binging if you can understand that the compulsive eating is from a natural instinct to survive from restriction and not that you're broken. So remember, um, there's nothing wrong with you for having this extreme intense hunger, whether mental or physical hunger. Um, you just need to eat the food 
and you need to gain the weight and this will bring you out of starvation mode and then and only then can your body start to slowly release the weight overshoot and regain because often we find that we gain all the weight back that we had before going on the restrictive diet or clean eating regime or over crazy exercise regime and we gain back even more than we had. So, but this is a survival mechanism and it takes a long time of sitting within this and reframing our brain, reprogramming our mindsets, rewriting the neural pathways and then and only then when you can rewire all this and challenge all of this and sit within it, um, can you then, can your body feel safe can your body feel nourished and fed and out of starvation mode? And it will know that it doesn't have to conserve anymore and it will slowly start to release. Okay, so remember that next time that you go to eat, that next time that you have that compulsion to eat, remember all of this, okay? So I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any more questions. Um, I answer a lot of these questions within my um, private group coaching course. So head over there, I'm more active over there. Um, I try to do the YouTube whenever I can. I know not everyone um, is in the right state to be in that coaching course, so I try to be on here. But if you want more support, um, weekly guidance from me, um, from everything that I've learned, more stuff like this, head over there and you get lifetime access to that and all my future editions and the group Q&As. If I don't see you over there, then I will see you in the next episode.